welcome everyone to our midweek interview and uh, we've been seeking every week to uh, interview someone from Trinity Church and hopefully it's been a nice way to see people that you won't necessarily see each week and now that church isn't running and uh, this this uh, this interview we have Julie Ballantyne so welcome Julie welcome Bob. How are you, Ross? Oh, I'm very well. Yes, Larry, going very well. Thank you. But uh, Julie, not uh, not everyone will necessarily know you at Trinity. You've been around for a while, but there's some new folk. So yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself to begin with. Um. Well, I'm a retired lady. I live in Tamworth. Uh, we moved in from the farm in 2009. Um. I'm a great grandmother. Uh, I most of the ladies that I have a lot to do with are in the older bracket. I would think the more mature ladies. I would think you. The would more say. mature. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's basically me. Grandchildren. I have got one granddaughter, and. Um, I have got one great grandson. Oh, wow. So, Done. I have very little to do with those two. <laughs> but anyway, so, and, um, you know, up until COVID hit, I was minding my grandson overnight while his mum and dad worked night shift. But, of course, I haven't been since then. Well, I was going to, my first question to you was going to be, how has COVID-19 um, impacted on your life? But there's one thing, what, what have been the things that you found have changed because of it for you? Um, well, I minded my great grandson about four days a week. So that kept me fairly occupied. And I did, you know, um, I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. And then all of a sudden I couldn't see him or my husband and I couldn't see him or the rest of our family. I think it was probably in 17th of March that we went and saw one of my husband's specialists and he told us to go home and not come out again because of my husband's health. So that's what we did. It's not hard to be at home um, because I have a lovely backyard and a, two lovely dogs and a husband and you know, we, we're okay. And we're not young and running about all the time, so you don't miss not going out. You just miss doing the things you used to do, like church on Sunday and small groups and play group when I could get there and things like that. How have you found tuning in to, to church online? Oh, it's good. It's really good. Um, at first it was difficult because I'm not very tech savvy, as you realised this morning. Um, I need a lot of prompting, but um, now I feel like an old hand at it and I watch Mondays. We have something on Mondays, we have something on Wednesday and Friday. So I watch all those and Sunday morning. So, you know, you keep me fairly busy. Oh, good, good to know. What do you think you've missed most about uh, ch churching together? I think coming to our new church because it is so, so beautiful and everyone seems just so happy that we're there and, and it's so different. And I went to the first play group there and it was just beautiful. You know, the little kids were so happy and I think their parents were too. And I miss seeing my friends there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lovely facility for, um, for what we're, we're using it for. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, I think. Yeah. Um, now, I, what, just, just tell us, how is it that you ended up coming, coming to Trinity Church? So how did you become a Christian and then end up at Trinity? Um, I came to Trinity because my granddaughter was in year 11, just started year 11 at Perinia, and my mum had passed away in the latter part of um, 2010, and she said, come on and come to church with me. So I thought, oh, all right, I'll go along. 
and I kept going along and, and I'm still there now. So that was, you know, since 2011. And you become a Christian along the, along the way there? Not, not at first. Um, probably after I got a few... Um, I think the funny thing is that way back in time, I kept getting little messages like the people from Trinity whom I didn't know that's where they came from used to come and buy fruit from me. Out along Worst Creek Road, and I didn't know that. I didn't, uh, not for a while. And then I started to see them all at church when I went. Um, I think it was my small groups. I was in a pretty great small group with Desley and Kay and um, I'm trying to think, Enid and, um, oh gosh, I can't remember. I've got Maureen and a lot of them we no longer have. Mm. But they and Beryl, I mean, they were just so wonderful to me and such great assistance to me. Um, and it was somewhere in that time of small group, I think. But I couldn't tell you which day or which month. Okay, but things just slowly dawned on you. And yeah. You yeah. realised Jesus Christ really was, the Son of God really was your King. Yeah, that's exactly right. Was it because, do you think that, uh, I mean, there's some lovely ladies in your small group there. Uh, was it because of the way in which they just befriended you? And get... I think so. I think so. And, and when I didn't understand things or when I'd get argumentative about things, you know, like, oh, I don't understand that or, oh, that can't be right, sort of, you know, they would help me. Because they were pretty special and they were pretty... Uh, you know, Norma had just so much knowledge and things like that. They all did. Yeah. Well, what did you do before retirement? I was a nurse. Oh, before I, I was a nurse and I yes. retired from nursing and my husband and I had a farm and we grew stone fruit and vegetables. How and I you, looked after my granddaughter. How did you find your time as a nurse? Um, I love nursing, but um, there comes a time in one's life where you have to make a few decisions. I used to teach nurses and then when I went to uni, I didn't wish to go to uni, so I went into administration. And then I went into quality management and then we had so many changes and they offered voluntary redundancy and my daughter was sick. And had Jen, who was one then, and had had surgery, neurosurgery, etc. So I decided to take redundancy, and we developed the farm, which meant we could do. It was a better lifestyle than work, no pay, but you know, <laughs> a better lifestyle. So, Julie, you've always struck me as a no-nonsense sort of person who um, doesn't um, suffer fools gladly. Mm. But did that, did that help you as you thought about Christianity or did it hinder you? Probably hindered me. Why is that? Because I think you, you get to think you know everything and really we're in control of absolutely nothing. And I think as I was younger, I could control most things. When I was a nurse, I could control what was happening. Um, but when my daughter got sick and had major neurosurgery, I could control nothing and I was still a nurse and I was still at work at that stage. So, you know, I was probably being shaken up then, I think. Yeah, big things like that can shake our confidence in our own ability a great deal. Oh, definitely, definitely. You, you know, you realise you can't fix the world. You never were intended to. It's often God's kindness to us, isn't it? When he puts us in situations that mm -hmm. suddenly discover how fragile we are. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, then last year when um, Jen was rushed to John Hunter and went into premier labour, et cetera, et cetera, I was really glad I had someone to hang on to then because um, I went down to John Hunter too. And so we had, you know, it was a lot of time spent 
praying and hoping that everyone would be all right. So what was the outcome of, of, of that for Jen? Uh, well, Josh is... Everyone will know who Jen is, by the way, uh, Julie. Who's, who's Jen? Um, she's Jen? She was Jen Butler, and she's now Jen Estens. And, um, you know, Joshy was born at 20, 32 weeks. And uh, he was a tiny little weed. And now he spent a month in the nurseries, in, a week in Newcastle. And then he was flown back and with Jen to Tamil. He spent another three weeks here. And that really is a time when you um, feel that little lives are very special and, you know, they're hanging in the balance, as do all of us, really. Yes, absolutely. So do you, do you think that, uh, well, what, what's it, how's it helped being a Christian as you go through things of uncertain, times of uncertainty, uh, like with, um, or with COVID-19? Has it made any difference to you? I think perhaps I'm older. So therefore, um, you know that these things come up against us in our lives but I don't think anyone alive probably has any experience of what this is doing to our world, yeah. let alone our country or our town or our church. To know that uh, Jesus is in control, even if we're not, isn't it? That's right. You know, you've got... <laughs> I can't sort of go out there and shake my fist and tell the world to behave. It doesn't work like that. But, you know, um, it's very interesting how it's affected the whole world. Yeah, it's true. True. Tell me, Julie, uh, is there something that you'd like to say to the Trinity family that you're missing? <laughs> I miss the company of my small group, although we do do work, but we don't do this fancy business of Zoom and all that. That's too much for me. Um, How's your small group meeting then, Julie? We, um, Denise sends us out on e via email a little passage and things and then we read that and we discuss it and talk back to each other. Um, so all on, the, all on the email? Yeah. Uh, we're not fancy. But, you know, <laughs> I think our, our average age would probably be 80. I'm not sure. Well, you're doing very well, aren't you? I don't know. But anyway, um, but I think the thing that I really found wonderful was one day or two days, I got letters in the mail from people from Trinity Church. I have no idea who sent them. One just had my name on it and it was coloured in, my name. Um, and it said from the, you know, I said a few things from the Trinity family, which was, you know, really uplifted as I came back up from the mailbox. And then... I think it was the week before last, I got one with the psalm, the psalm on it. And it was just from the Trinity family. Uh, another day I had Becky, Beck, turn up at my door with the gloves on. She said, the kids are in the car, it's all right. And she gave me this little bag and in it was some stones and um, some bulbs and a message from the Trinities. And, you know... <laughs> Um, John's rung me up a few times to keep me in line, I think. And just all that has been just so helpful. Good. And I do miss them all. I miss the little ones and the older ones. Them all. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It will be nice when we can all be back together again, no matter how far away that is. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a worry because um, when we were first told to come home, you know, not go out again, um, Bob specialist from Sydney said to us, I think it'll be six months. And we don't hear from him again. He has a tele, he'll give a tele, telephone conference with us mm -hmm. on the 17th of June. And I don't think we'll be really flying around the state much before that. Yes, and yeah, maybe even longer, much longer. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Julie, thank you so much for uh, 
been happy to do this. <laughs> I wasn't at first, you know that. <laughs> no, I did have to push you a little bit, that's true. But thank you. And, thank you. And we do indeed look forward to the time we can be back with little ones and older ones, more mature ones. and everything. <laughs> Yes, all of us. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Julie. I'll stop this now. Thank you, Ross. Bye-bye.